money is something which everyone desires but uh, most of them they do not talk about it they do not acknowledge that that you know this is uh, we desire this much amount of money or uh, because you know uh, because of the conditioning over a period of time that it's wrong to talk about money or it's selfish it's greedy to be money focused so all of these uh, silent you know uh, the narratives that are there in our mind uh, actually blocks us our true receiving capacity that receiving that can happen with ease it becomes with difficulty so like i believe that uh, everything is energy everything is a vibration and uh, this is so it's so interesting that you know these uh, we are doing this in the navratri navratri meaning nine days and nights we celebrate the divine goddess energy and uh, she's the creator she gives uh, abundantly to everyone but are we willing and open to receive that abundance with total ease and without you know any kind of uh, conditionings or you know some uh, voices that uh, do not ask god for more okay uh, it is selfish to say that so uh, i mean from where these thoughts are coming uh, what are they about and all of this i believe it is so important because um, as i said that everything is energy okay so why do we have to separate money from this then you know everything is a part of creator part of the universe well, the universal energy it's a divine energy okay so why do we say that money is separate from this divine energy money is also divine okay so we have to learn how to receive this uh, plenty of abundance uh, with total ease and uh, that's what i uh, i'm going to talk about today uh, neelu that uh, you know the why is behind it where is it coming from what are uh, what is your money personality uh, what is your money story about because everything is going to define your relationship with money because i believe that what uh, how, you know the way you do your money is the way you do your life like if you uh, it's your perception about money okay so whatever is your perception how you think how you feel uh do you feel uh, like like do you feel scared to even look at your mobile uh whenever there is an amount debited and <laughs> to check the okay and now this much is the balance left in my account no i don't want to look at my mobile okay now definitely there is a feeling of unease and discomfort in you so this is a kind of a money wound that you are carrying okay. and uh, what kind of uh, believes you have around money why do you feel this way where is it coming from okay. say if you feel like uh, i do not trust myself with money so i am going to you know uh, not take care of my money finances uh, on my own i'm going to give it to someone else to take care of. always living in denial so this is again a different kind of personality so everything that you perceive about money how you perceive is what you're going to project to the world and universe is going to respond to that energy of yours so can you imagine like whatever is our perception is what we are projecting and then the world is actually perceiving us depending on that projection of ours so if i believe in my mind i feel that uh, you know money is evil because of some past experiences so i uh, definitely i'm carrying on evil money wound okay and money is evil this is what i'm going to project this energy i'm going to project to the universe now the universe is also going to respond to this energy by sending such people in my life which will make me feel more like this okay the money being more evil so then i will be in a way shunning money away okay so this is again blocking my receiving okay so i believe that the first step to start here is to know where you are in this journey in the money journey okay your status and uh, what what personality like who are you okay who are you based on that what are your money wounds and based on the money wounds what are your narratives that means what is the money script and then we go in the releasing and healing okay and uh, 
it's very interesting that I would like to also, you know, uh, link this, connect this, because we are, talk, we are doing this in the Navratri and it's a wonderful time. It's a beautiful portal that has opened up to receive, actually. And these are true receiving, unlock our receiving. And these nine days, we are celebrating the nine different forms of goddess, divine goddess and earth. Okay. Similarly, it's so interesting that uh, we have nine money archetypes. Okay. And uh, yeah, and, and the, the journey also, if uh, the nine days of Navratri, we start from day one to day nine, it, it itself is a journey of cleansing and purifying, then activating ourselves, our true, you know, potential, and uh, being able to, you know, uh, hide, enhance our awareness, basically awakening and reaching to that enlightenment state. Okay, so it's all a, it's a journey. It's like one by one, we are going there. We are going there. Similarly, in money journey, the money journey has got, uh, I will say it has got four pillars or you can say four pillars are like, you can say four stages or phases. And the first pillar starts from un, being unstable in money, reality where you are always, uh, you don't have that regular, or stable uh, source of income coming to you or money is not, you know, regularly, consistently is not flowing. So you still feel there is instability. And from there, you go to the next phase, which is of creating stability. So now you have stable income. Then you go to security and comfort. So you have some, some sort of money freedom now where you can choose, you can think of, okay, I can do this course now. I want to uh, pursue this hobby. So you're, you do have some kind of money freedom, but still you're not completely there. And then you progress and you go to the next, which is the financial independence. Okay, and here you are now going, thinking of how can I contribute to the society, to the community, to the planet Earth. Okay, this, we all want to, okay, but we are somewhere in, you know, uh, in this, uh, money journey in between like phase one to phase two or three somewhere and the last stage is of financial enlightenment so we are again talking of enlightenment the first phase where you are unstable a lot of cleansing is happening so from phase one to phase two cleansing happens from phase two to phase three you're activating yourself okay more and more again phase three and phase from phase three to phase four you're not only activating, but at the same time, you're awakening your uh, hidden uh, potential in you. You're awakening that maximum capacity, the true abundance that you are. You're awakening that. And once you reach phase four, now no one can stop you. You're unstoppable. You are living. Uh, you are abundant. We are actually abundant. But it's only just because of our these money wounds that stops us from truly, truly being that abundant self that we are actually and then you know so the, so this whole stage which i explained uh, maybe the are uh, money archetypes the nine money archetypes are placed across this uh you know these four pillars which i mentioned okay so uh that's why it's important to know that okay which archetype are you what is your combination we are always a combination of you know two or three and more like sometimes four archetypes also and if you are uh like for i'll give an example okay like uh there is an archetype called innocent archetype where that's the starting one uh here you are at the phase one okay where you feel unstable in your finance financial uh, reality financial life and uh, you are looking for stability and every archetype has its own strengths does does not mean that you know everything is great no every archetype every personality that individual has is having some key area some strengths uh, so definitely when you once you know your archetype you will know that okay these are my strengths okay and every archetype has some gray areas the shadow cells these shadow cells are nothing but the money wounds so once you identify that you have more clarity about where am I? 